All right, good Thursday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, let's begin with T-Mobile. John Ledger, fired up. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. The stock is not running. I think it's an actual buy. Maybe there was some hot money there betting that what would happen is that he would announce that he's interested in being uh, taken over. That's obviously not the case. He's taken another million plus subscribers. He has done so much that's right. They're taking him. Everybody's a donor. Verizon's a donor. ATT's a donor. There's a moment where he gives you a forecast basically for everybody else. He's on a roll. Uh, I would not. Uh, I would say that when you listen to everybody else in the quarter, you're going to say, holy cow, I wish I bought T-Mobile. Go buy T-Mobile. Hmm. And there you have it. All right, how about Qualcomm's quarter? Yeah, Qualcomm is really, look, they're in a big fight with Apple. A big fight with Apple. Uh, you're uh, not going to make your numbers, but they did say that they're going to give the latest technology to Apple, which is important because there were lots of press stories saying that they wouldn't. It's a good chance to buy Apple. Uh, don't count Qualcomm out. Uh, I, w I believe that uh, they will find some way to settle. And then on MedDash, you talked about American Express. American Express was just not every time, not every quarter is an actionable quarter. I, I found American Sports Express was, revenues were a little better. They said that earnings may not be as good. There really wasn't much there. JP Morgan saying snap shares could fall after July 31st. Yeah, I mean, you know, there is just the lockup expiration, but also the idea that business isn't that good. Uh, it's important that Snap get in touch with all these large shareholders and have them take a pledge not to sell and then get that pledge out there so people know. You've been saying that for a while now. Meanwhile, China exiting its Whole Foods stake. Yeah, well, you know, it turned out obviously there was no other bidder uh, that was willing to pay higher. There may have been other bidders. Uh, congratulations to Jana. Really, really good call. They've had some winners and some losers. Here's something interesting. Sears launching Kenmore products yeah, on this Amazon. This is really hurting Home Depot because people always felt that you could not am you couldn't be Amazon if you're Home Depot because large appliances cannot be. XPO Logistics, which has been on Mad Money a number of times, big secondary today. I really think it's still a buy, even if you didn't get in at XPO, has been last mile provider for large uh, products. So uh, it can happen. I think it's way overdone again. But Home Depot is now uh, part of the qu uh, quotient of stocks that have too high a multiple. If you think that Amazon is going to go against them, I remain steadfast that Home Depot will be great. But you know what? Like, like I said, I haven't liked retail in a long time, and I'm not going to budge today. All right, staying with retail for a moment, Nike upgraded by Morgan Stanley. Well, you know, that's more apparel, and I think that uh, apparel's very different. Uh, th that's a situation where they're talking about supply chain management and being able to get uh, to market faster uh, with newer product, which is really important in apparel. We've seen that with other apparel companies win when they can get those turns. Uh, remember, Flex, uh, which is a terrific technology company, is Nike's partner to get that done. It's a good play on Flex if you want the derivative. And then on Stop Trading on Swalk in the Street, you talked about United Rentals. Yeah, well, United Rentals, Mike Nealon, doing a terrific job. A lot of people felt that he wouldn't have a good quarter. They were wrong. Uh, United Rentals is a fantastic play on Terex, so, you know, big uh, upward cranes. But it's also really a great read through for Caterpillar. Uh, for domestic, I continue to think the Caterpillar, unfortunately, Caterpillar's run. They're going to run into the quarter, so maybe wait until after. But URI plus some great commentary out of China tells me that Caterpillar's good. All right, let's move on to some earnings to watch for Friday. First up, Schlumberger. Schlumberger's going to be bad. Uh, Action Alerts owns it. Why should we own it? Well, we are long-term patient for oil. Uh, you know, the CEO is uh, Bear, and he's going to say, I think he's going to push out the turn uh, to late 2018 because they have a lot of deep water, and you can't justify uh, drilling deep water between 40 and 50. And if I had to take a guess, Bug Chevron will be watching the oil stocks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bug is a uh, uh, Bug is um, right now got the jump on Nvidia. I mean, it seems to be Bug is Chevron. Uh, they report next week. I, I think that I, I like oil here to fifty. Uh, oil's become a trade. Look, we have a person at Real Money, Carly Garner, and she's worth worth the price of real money. She's just been nailing every one of these turns. I don't talk enough about why people should be subscribing to Real Money, but it's really a remarkable product. Harley Garner, realmoney.com. How about GE's quarter? I think it's terrible. Uh, it'll be better in Q1, I hope, where they had negative cash flow. Uh, we're stuck in GE. We're stuck in Snap One. I think Snap One's probably overdone. I got to do more work on it with my team. Uh, uh, we're stuck in uh, Danaher for now, but at least we're up in Danaher, another conglomerate. Of course, I look at the ones that are bad because the good ones take care of themselves. Uh, GE's going to have a new executive, John Flannery. He's got a kitchen sink, really. It's going to be Jeff Immelt's last one. Remember, what are they big in? They're, they're in oil, not so good. They're in turbines, really hasn't been that good. Locomotives are terrible. Uh, they're in infrastructure. Uh, you know what? I mean, they got you know in healthcare. They have to do. Um, they have to take out two billion dollars worth of costs. They could use someone from Tryon on the board. I wish that would happen. They really need that badly. Uh, most complacent company on earth. 
All right, and then finally, Honeywell, they're also set to report. Now, there's the least complacent industrial. I think Honeywell's going to have a remarkable quarter. Uh, Darius Damchek's going to carry on exactly with what Dave Cody did. It's, uh, I think that Honeywell's got, uh, they have amazing aerospace to visit. Business. Darius is considering Dan Loeb's suggestion maybe they spin it off. Uh, uh, Honeywell has sold divisions from time to time that I really like and uh, bought uh, new companies that I really like, and it's all worked out. It's been one of the best performing industrials. Uh, Honeywell United Technologies often look at GE and say, What the heck are you thinking? Uh, that could be another what the heck are you thinking moment. All right, great analysis from Jim Kramer. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, hey, for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.